This video will discuss the voting process for non-registered voters, including election day registration. The registration judge is responsible for the duties discussed in this video. Non-registered voters are those individuals who are either not on the registered roster or on the registered roster but under a different name or address and therefore need to update their information by re-registering. We will discuss each of these next steps in detail, but the basic procedure for registering voters is as follows. First, verify the voters in the correct precinct by checking the precinct finder. Next, verify the voter is not already voted absentee by checking the absentee election day registrants for polling place list that is provided with the roster. Then, have the voter complete the voter registration application. Next, view the voter's election day registration documentation. Then, point out the oath at the top of the page and have the voter complete one line of the roster page. Finally, initial a yellow voter receipt and issue it to the voter. The voter will bring the receipt to the ballot judge and exchange it for a ballot. For voting purposes, municipalities are divided into one or more precincts. Each residential address is located within a specific precinct and the voter must go to a specific polling location to vote. This ensures that voters vote for offices specific to their jurisdiction. A map and a precinct finder are provided with your supplies. The precinct finder lists all the streets and address ranges in the municipality and the corresponding polling locations. Precinct finders are available for the City of St. Paul and for Ramsey County. It is important to check the precinct finder for each new registrant to ensure that every voter is voting in the correct polling place. To use the precinct finder, locate the street address column and find the voter's street name. In the house range column, find the range in which the voter's house or apartment building number is included. Determine if the voter's house number falls in a range of odd numbers only, even numbers only, or both even and odd numbers. Because some streets serve as precinct boundaries, individuals who live on one side of the street may vote at a different polling place than individuals on the other side of the street. Therefore, it is important to determine whether an address range includes only even numbers, only odd numbers, or both even and odd numbers. In the precinct codename column, determine the ward and precinct in which the voter must vote. If a voter is at the wrong polling place, use the polling place address list in the front of the precinct finder to direct the voter to the correct location. If a voter's address cannot be found in the precinct finder, please call the election judge hotline and staff can verify where the voter should vote. Because absentee ballots are received at the elections office on election day, there may be additional voters in your precinct that need to be added to the absentee election day registrants for polling place list. If this needs to be done, a staff person will call the head judge who will add voters to the list, verifying that the individual has not already voted in person. To be eligible to vote in a given polling place, a person must reside in the precinct on election day, be 18 years of age on election day, be a citizen of the United States, and have resided in Minnesota for 20 days immediately preceding election day. Please remember, it is not necessary for the voter to have lived in the precinct for 20 days preceding Election Day, just the state of Minnesota. An individual is not eligible to register if he is under court-ordered guardianship in which the court has revoked his voting rights, has been found by the court to be legally incompetent, has been convicted of a felony unless he has fully completed the sentence, including probation, or has been discharged from the sentence. By completing and signing the voter registration application, a voter is attesting to the fact that he meets the eligibility requirements which are listed on the application. All non-registered voters must complete a voter registration application. Boxes 1 and 2 ask for information regarding citizenship and age. Voter registration applications are accepted even if voters do not check the citizenship and age boxes as voters are certifying these two items when they sign the application in Box 8. 
Box 3 asks for the voter's name. Last and first name are required. Box 4 requests the voter's address. A voter's residential address must include a house or apartment building number and street name. A business or post office may not be used. The voter must provide the address where he currently resides. Individuals without a traditional home may provide a description of the location they normally sleep. Box 5 asks for a P.O. box if mail cannot be delivered directly to the residence. However, if a voter completes this section, ensure that he has also completed box number 4. A voter cannot register under a P.O. box alone. He must have a physical address. In box 6, a voter must provide his date of birth. Box 7 asks for an identification number. Voters must provide their Minnesota driver's license or identification card number if they have one. If they do not have one, they must provide the last four digits of their social security number. If a voter does not have any of these numbers, he must check the third box stating that he does not have any of the above numbers. Box 8 lists all the information that the voter is certifying when he signs the application. Have the voter review the eligibility requirements and then sign and date the application. The election judge then views the voter's election day registration documentation and completes the bottom section of the voter registration application titled Election Judge Official Use Only. Fill in the ward and precinct information and then check the box corresponding to the registration documentation used as proof. It is not necessary to rewrite the identification number if it is documented in box 7, but write C above, which indicates that the registration judge saw the driver's license or Minnesota ID card. On the reverse side of the application is the voucher form. This must be completed if the voter is using a voucher as election day registration documentation. The individual who vouches for a voter must complete the following. Check if he is pre-registered, registered today, or an employee of a residential facility. Provide his residential address, telephone number, the voter's name, and his signature. The election judge then writes in the voter ID number of the voucher. If the voucher registered that day, write in, registered today. Finally, the election judge signs and dates the form. Who can vouch for voters? An individual may vouch if he is registered in the precinct or registers on election day by any method other than vouching and has personal knowledge that the voter for whom he is vouching lives in the precinct. Who cannot vouch? An individual cannot vouch if he has been vouched for on election day or if he is an official challenger. Vouchers may vouch for a total of eight people as long as they personally know that the voters for whom they are vouching live in the precinct. Use the voucher scoring sheet found in the black folder to track the number of people for whom someone is vouched. Residential facility employees may vouch for residents on election day. Examples of facilities include nursing homes and shelters. Please note that the employee does not have to reside in the precinct. Residential facilities will have completed a voucher list prior to election day and this list will be in the front of the non-registered roster. Any employee listed on the voucher list can vouch for an unlimited number of voters on election day. The employee and election judge will complete the voucher form on the back of each voter registration application. If a voucher list has not been previously completed, an employee must show identification from the facility and then complete the residential voucher form, which is located in the black forms folder. The employee and election judge will also have to complete the voucher form on the back of each voter registration application. To register on Election Day, voters must be able to prove both their identity and their residency in the precinct. There are single documents that establish both identity and residency, or a combination of documents that can be used to establish identity and residency. Two posters titled, Required Documents for Proof of Residence for Persons Registering Today to Vote, have been provided in your green box. One should be posted at the registration table and one on the wall in a viewable manner. If a document is not listed on the poster, it is not acceptable as Election Day registration documentation. After completing the voter registration application, the election judge will view the voter's documentation. A voter needs to present only one of the following methods to establish both identity and residence. A valid Minnesota driver's license, learner's permit, or Minnesota identification card 
or a receipt for any of these documents that includes the voter's current name and address. Oath of a registered voter in this precinct who can vouch for the new registrant's residence in the precinct. Employees of nursing homes, shelters, and certain other residential facilities may also vouch for the persons who reside there. Prior registration in this precinct with another name or address. Verify that the voter is listed in the registered roster. A notice of late registration letter from Ramsey County Elections. A tribal identification card containing the voter's name, address, signature, and photo. If a voter does not have one of the documents just described, he must present one document from Group A and one document from Group B. The documents from Group A establish identity, and the documents from Group B establish residence. The following documents establish identity and must contain the voter's name and photo. Minnesota driver's license or Minnesota identification card that is either expired or has a previous address. U.S. passport. U.S. military identification card. Student identification card from a Minnesota college. Tribal identification card containing name, photo, and signature. The following documents establish residency and must include the voter's current name and address and have a due date within 30 days of the election. Original bill for gas, electric, telephone, internet provider, satellite or cable TV, water, sewer or solid waste services. Original bills can be printed from the internet. An itemized rent statement that includes utility expenses, a current student fee statement with voter's current name and address. College students may use any of the methods of registration just discussed to register on Election Day. In addition, they may also use the following documents. A current student fee statement containing the voter's current address and a photo identification card or a current student identification card including a photo if the college has provided a student housing list to Ramsey County Elections. Please remember that the following documents are always unacceptable for Election Day registration. Out-of-state driver's license or identification card. Out-of-state student identification card. Non-itemized rent statement. Mortgage statement. Marriage license. Bank statement. Tax forms. Ordinary mail. Remember, only the documents listed on the poster are acceptable as Election Day registration documentation. Show voters the poster to assist them in finding a method that will work for them. After the election judge views the registration documentation, the voter must complete one line of the non-registered roster. The roster consists of pages with election and precinct information, the voter's oath, and blank lines for voters to provide their name, signature, address, and date of birth. Be sure to let the voters complete this page themselves unless they ask for assistance. A voter must always sign his own name or provide a stamp. 